Let me quickly pull the truck out and uh, it is kind of dark outside right now, but I can kind of show you guys the finished product. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and um, I made the executive decision if you guys, um, well, if you guys are watching this right now, we're actually in the middle of this whole virus pandemic thing and I got a lot of free time. So with my brand new 2020 Tacoma TRD off-road behind me, as you guys know, on my previous truck, my 2018 Tacoma off-road, I had a lift kit wheels and tires, which I still have. And um, as the title says, we're gonna be installing it today and tomorrow, probably. It's gonna take probably two days. It took two days on the first one and I didn't film any of it because it was a learning experience, but I now know how it all goes together. So on the 2020, why don't I show you guys how you put the lift kit on. And for any of you guys that are wondering, there is only 118 miles on the brand new 2020 and we're gonna go ahead and slap a lift kit, wheels and tires on it. So let me show you the lift kit. Now this right here is the lift kit right off of my 2018 Tacoma truck. And there are some things that I changed from what you first get out of the box and some stuff I added. So let's walk you through it real quick. First off, this is a strut front lift kit. It's going, I'm gonna list it in the description down below, but it's the Rough Country Premium Shock Absorbing N3 three inch lift kit for the Tacomas 2016 to 2020. When you first get this out of the box with the front struts right here, these are the front N3 struts, you don't get the spring. What happens is you take this spring off of the factory struts. So these right here are the factory struts from my 2018. Um, the spring and top hat right here were on this. So you have to compress the spring. Basically you use a spring compressor. You compress the spring, take the top hat off, you transfer it to the N3 strut, compress the spring again, put the top hat back on and you're set and ready to go. I pretty much have a head start here because I left them assembled from my 2018 so that it's easier to put on the 2020 and we're ready to go. So that's the first part. On the rear, these are the rear shocks right here and something I did, two things actually, um, I, I added these uh, boots, the shock boots right here because the N3 struts on the back don't come with shock boots and these are just good to uh, one, just protect your shocks in terms of the oil that's inside of them, keep the dirt out so that as that shock's moving in and out of the center piston, I don't know what you call it, I'm not the greatest with word, it protects it from all the dirt. So I added these shock boots and the other thing I did, these rubber bushings right here are actually aftermarket. So with the Rough Country N3 lift kit, you don't get any bushings. They tell you to reuse these stock bushings on the Toyota Tacoma. Now, I'm not sure if this was user error or the fact that I actually tow a trailer and I put a lot of weight on the back end of my truck frequently, but this is what happened to the stock bushings. After about 10,000 miles, these were the stock bushings and they got compacted and they started to fall apart and this one in that case started to rip. I just don't think they're used to the excess load that the lift kit puts on it and or just the weight capacity or maybe I just tightened down this top bolt too much. But besides that point, I went ahead and I bought some upgraded bushings. I'll link them down in the description down below as well as the shock boots so that you can see what else you might want to consider when you're doing this lift kit. And this is a good time for a little side point. On my 2018 Tacoma, I had roughly about 25,000 miles put on this lift kit. So I, I literally know quite a bit about it and this is some of the modifications I had to do that just help the longevity of this lift kit to make it last the 25,000 miles and many, many more miles to come. Uh, with this lift kit. So along with the rear shocks in this kit, we also get our spacers for the back as well as our longer U-bolts. Uh, these come in the kit. And then also in the kit, they have a front diff drop. And this is something I also took out and replaced with a bigger diff drop. My Tacoma's four wheel drive, so my, my CV angles were kind of on the high end and I could kind of tell that it was struggling. So. I went ahead and got a bigger drop kit. And again, I'll link this in the description down below, but about 5,000 miles into running this lift kit, I went ahead and bought a bigger drop kit. This is a solid inch drop kit versus that is a half inch drop kit. So double the actual drop. Um, and this helped a lot when it came to just the drivability of it. And it, it just sounded a lot healthier and felt a lot healthier of a truck while it was driving with that drop versus that drop. You also get these longer bolts in the kit for your front skid plate. 
because as you drop the diff, you need some longer bolts to get the front skid plate to mount up. All right, so those are the parts. So now what tools do you need to actually do this lift kit? And let me tell you right now, I was literally, when I first did this, I discovered a lot of tools that I thought I could get away with not needing that I ended up having to go to the hardware store and buy and it just it just made it so much easier. So let's go through the tools now. So before we get into the main tools, I did this whole thing in this exact garage right here to literally do my whole entire lift kit. So the first things you're gonna need are one, a jack, and two, at least four jack stands. This is just a Harbor Freight jack and a set of four Harbor Freight jack stands. So those are the main items, because obviously you need to get your truck in the air. Ooh, check out that, another Tacoma, silver versus the gray. But then you need the variety of the main tools. And now, a lot of this stuff you may or may not need. Um, I'm just kind of just giving you overview of what all I had at my disposal. And I'll hit on some stuff that like was very, very crucial for this install. So to start off, I have my main Craftsman set here with just literally a variety of everything you possibly could need, all the way up to an 18 millimeter socket. Again, we're gonna be dealing pretty much with metric on this whole entire install, so metric is what you need. We have all the way up to a 19 millimeter in our regular sockets. We have our half inch, quarter inch, our eighth inch drive. We're mostly gonna be using our half and our quarter. We have a variety of extenders and adapters so we can go from half to quarter. Just like having a good socket set is a, a very crucial thing to start with. The main things you're gonna need in terms of sizes, right? Sizes are your 19 millimeter, your 18 millimeter, uh, and down. So having 19 to pretty much 10 is what you're mainly gonna need for this, but you're also gonna need some very crucial deep sockets. And those are right here. You are going to need a 19 millimeter deep socket. This thing is used more than anything on this whole entire install a 22 millimeter and a 21 millimeter deep socket. You need all three of these. That's something I thought I could get away with not having, and I had to go back to the store and buy more of these. So this is something I overlooked on the start, but have these three deep sockets. Trust me, it'll help you a million times over. What'll also help you a million times over, and I am so thankful that I bought this, is a really good half inch drive impact gun. Now this is the Roby P261. This is literally the most badass impact driver you can buy in the Roby set. And you definitely want multiple batteries because you will burn through multiple batteries doing this. So have a charger ready and have the next battery charged up and ready to go. But having an impact driver for this install, in my opinion, is essential. You need an impact gun. If you're doing this with just this little baby right here, you're gonna be in for a world of hurt. Following off that, you're gonna want a breaker bar because uh, some of the bolts on there are very, very, very tight. So you're gonna need a breaker bar to break a lot of these loose that your impact driver, if you're using a cordless one like mine, just really doesn't have the torque to break. So you're gonna need a breaker bar. You're also gonna need a variety of wrenches. Um, I have a 19 millimeter, 15, 14, 13, and 12. Uh, the main one is the 14 millimeter and the 19 millimeter. And uh, my 14 millimeter is actually a ratcheting. Um, you'll see this comes in very handy to have a ratcheting uh, set handy as well just for those tight areas where you can't actually get a socket or your impact in having a little ratcheting one to be able to get in that small area is helpful. Now moving on into the persuasion section of the tools you are going to need a sledge or I have a dead blow hammer here you're gonna need a hammer. Hammers for this are super super important I have a regular hammer I have a dead blow this dead blow um, pretty much all the beatings you're seeing on this was from when I actually did the first lift kit, so that's crucial. Crescent wrenches, these come in handy in certain areas where you, you just can't get in with wrenches and you need a secondary wrench. Um, I have crescent wrenches, some big screwdrivers, again, for more persuasion, um, some vice grips, again, persuasion, and you're going to need a cutoff saw for the diff drop. And I'll show you in the install where this comes in, but there's actually a bracket where the diff drops. There's a bracket, you gotta cut a little section out of that bracket. And uh, something that's also not shown here, you're gonna want a can of spray paint to paint over that raw metal that we're gonna be cutting. So 
Um, I will show you that when we get to it. But as far as the tools, that is the essentials of what you need for this install. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the truck on in here and uh, we're gonna get started. My bad, it kind of blended in with all the socket set, but you also, this is, this is also really important, you're gonna need a torque wrench. So this is just a simple Harbor Freight one. You're gonna want it to be able to go up to at least 100 foot pounds, but a torque wrench, half inch drive, torque wrench, also very important to make sure we torque down all of our bolts to the correct specifications. Those LEDs look good. All right, so now I'm gonna bring the uh, jacks over and I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the front end of this truck. Also, make sure you set your emergency brake so that your truck does not go anywhere. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna jack it up and put it up on some jack stands. I guess I also forgot to mention if you're doing this in a garage or even outside, uh, light is very helpful. I thankfully from making videos have this giant light ring and then also this is from Hyper Harbor Freight But it's just a uh, magnetic a hook as well light that you can put up inside of your fender wells where you're working so um, Lighting helps a lot. So now I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the truck man I always tend to forget information before you jack up your truck What you need to do is go ahead and break all your lug nuts loose. So get your breaker bar um, right here and we're gonna need our 22 millimeter socket for these lug nuts and go ahead and break all of those loose and then jack up your truck so I'm gonna do that now okay so the truck is jacked up and as you guys can see right there that's kind of where I put it on these um, frame rails on both sides. That's kind of how I jack it up. Also, I, I put down my little comfy mats. I have two of these. These are actually just kitchen mats. I'll link them down in the description down below. They're pretty cheap, but uh, they save your, your knees and your ass when you're on the ground working on your vehicle. All right, so let's get into it. I'm gonna take the tires off and we will start disassembling the current suspension and putting our new one on. All right, so looking at our front end suspension, we're on the passenger side. We'll have to jump over to the driver's side at the same time to do a lot of this stuff. But the first things I like to do that we're gonna remove are our brake line uh, bracket. So there's a 10 millimeter bolt here and a 12 millimeter bolt right here. I'm gonna take both of these off and one point out, I'm gonna be using a socket up here, but back here, it's a little tight to get a socket in here. So I'm just gonna use my ratcheting 12 millimeter wrench right here to take this bracket off and then we'll move on to the next thing. So we have this removed right here. We have this removed back here. And one little thing I like to do is I like to put the bolts back into where they go. So that way I'm less likely to lose them. Um, and also I took off this bracket right here, which is another 12 millimeter bolt right here. Uh, again, the whole reason for this is just to free up these wires and these lines. So when we undo this assembly and this comes forward, we're not stressing those lines, potentially breaking them, getting into a lot more problems. So next thing we're gonna do is actually disconnect our sway bar right here. So on the back side of this right here, we have a bolt and that is a 17 millimeter bolt. And we're going to remove that right now. Now this is the point where we need to go over to the other side and repeat everything that we just did because we need to swing this sway bar up and out of the way. As you can see, it's not moving because it's locked in on the other side. We need to swing this up and out of the way. That way we can actually get our whole entire strut assembly out. So now we're gonna go over to the other side and we're gonna swing this up and out of the way. So after disassembling the sway bar on this side, I actually forgot something. So yes, we do need to disconnect the sway bar on both sides to be able to swing this up. But to also get this out of the way, we need to remove this castle nut here. So we need to take this, uh, I can actually take it off right now on this side. But you need to take this little carter pin off of this castle nut. Oh, whoops. Take this little carter pin off this castle nut. You might need pliers to do this. Uh, this thing's literally only got 118 miles on it, so it comes right off. And then you need to undo this castle nut, which I believe is an 18 millimeter. I will double check that though. And you need to do that on both sides. And then we're gonna lower this A-arm assembly. This whole entire thing is gonna come up and forward. It's gonna allow this to come up and we're gonna be able to swing our sway bar out of the way. You are actually gonna need a 19 millimeter socket for this right here. So let's do that now. Now we come to the fun part. With that removed, we now need to hit this with a hammer or the dead blow in my case to be able to get this to release down and out. So we're gonna do that now. 
Well, as you can see, I actually left the castle nut on there to release this. And um, one thing I kind of found out was uh, don't use a dead blow hammer. Just use a normal hammer and hit it right here. I'll show you guys on the other side, but that's what you need to do to get this thing to release. As you guys can see, I was smacking the shit out of it with the dead blow. Dead blows don't do a good job of putting shock into it. Just give it a good tap with the hammer right here and it'll come loose. So now with this, you kind of want to put a little force down here and remove that castle nut. Put a little force down on the top here. Push down on it. Remove your castle nut. Or drop it in my case. Then that should allow you to let this swing up. And you can then let this swing forward. Good to go. Now let's go on to the other side. Again, on this side, we're going to remove this carter pin that is holding onto our castle nut. This one I actually might need to use pliers to get off. Now I was able to get it off with my fingers here. Pull that off. And now again, we're going to use that 17 or the 19 millimeter to take this castle nut off. And then again, I'll show you on this side to hit this with a hammer and it will release. Again, we want to leave the castle nut on a little bit so that way this thing just doesn't go whoop bang and fall off. All right, so with that disassembled, again, you want to watch your lines because this does put a little tension on it. Just make sure that there's not too much tension on them and just be careful to not push pressure on this and you'll be fine. So now we can now swing our sway bar up and out of the way. So now we're going to move on to removing our top hat up here. I don't know if you can see it over there, but there's a third one on the back. There's three 14 millimeter bolts up here holding that on. And then down here, I believe this is a 19 millimeter. Yes, it is a 19 millimeter on both sides. So 19 millimeter on both sides. On this, it's really easy to put a um, wrench on this side. So I'm going to get a 19 millimeter wrench on this side. And then I'm going to use my impact on this side to take this off. As you can see right there, easily took the bolt out, and this is the point in time, remember when we were saying all the stress on these lines here? I take a jack and I put it up underneath of the brake caliper on this side, so that way it keeps it balanced. If not, this whole thing is going to want to tip to the side and put a lot of strain on those lines. So, little tip, put a jack stand over here. So now, we're going to move on to taking those top cap bolts off, and that is a 14 millimeter bolt, and this is where your ratcheting wrenches are going to come in handy. All right, that is one of them out, and these are the new ones, so you can kind of see the difference in the height between the two of them. This is where we're gonna get our additional lift. So it's a strut lift, so basically they took this collar and they moved it up the strut a little bit, so you get more lift in your strut. The springs have the same density, you just get more in the strut on the bottom part. So now let's go ahead and let's take off the other side, and then uh, we will move on to putting the new ones in. And there they are. One little bonus tip I don't see a lot of people mentioning is the top hats are different for the passenger and for the driver's side. As you can kind of see here, I, I just double checked to make sure this was the driver's side. They're in the same orientation. These two are in a different orientation. So make sure you have the right top hat on the right side. So in a normal situation with this lift kit, what you're gonna use is a spring compressor to take the spring off of this and the top hat, and you're gonna put it onto this strut. Again, this spring and this top hat are from my original truck. So that's what you wanna do in this case as well. Okay, so like I've basically been saying, we're gonna take the new strut and put it up into the AR. And I can tell you right now from past experience, this is the part that sucks. This is the part that I struggled with the most and last time I had someone helping me. So let's wish me luck as I attempt to do this on the driver's side first. I'm pretty much just gonna set up the main camera and film my struggles. Again, this is like a brand new truck versus on the last time I did this, I had I think about 40, no, yeah, right, right around 35, 40,000 miles on that truck. So this one might go a little bit easier now that the suspension isn't really as worn down. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna set the camera and I'm gonna try and put this strut in. Here we go. I got it in. I got it in. And those are in too. Uh, this right here, I reminded or I was, I remembered that I used the giant crowbar to be able to get in here, put it right here, 
and push down so that I was able to push this control arm down far enough to be able to push this in and get it in. And then I used a hammer to tap the bolt in. So there's you guys' tip of the day. Have a giant crowbar. And that actually was a lot easier than the last time I did it. With that said, I still have the other side to do. So let's go ahead and let's go do the other side. All right, I tried to cheat a step. I just had a bitch, but I got it in on the other side. Still took way less effort than the first time I did it, but I tried to cheat a step and it ended up costing me. I had to re-undo it, but it, it worked out. Let me show you. The front power steering uh, bar right here, the tie rod, I believe it's called the tie rod. You're supposed to disconnect this. Based on the instructions, you're supposed to take this off. I tried to get around it by not doing it, and it cost me. On this side, what I ended up um, and maybe you saw it towards the end of the video, but this was twisting forward way too much and it was putting way too much strain on my brake lines and stuff. And I was like, shit, I gotta take this off. So uh, I quickly undid it. It's a 19 millimeter bolt. It does have a carter pin through it. So take your pliers, take your carter pin out and then undo this with your impact wrench. Uh, pretty quick and easy. And then you use a hammer just like up here to release this knuckle, smack it a few times. This knuckle releases out and then you're good to go. So this one did seem to be a little bit of a bitch to get it. Uh, actually down in but for the most part I was able to get it done so now we kind of move on to just assembling everything back together and torquing everything down to spec let's begin with our passenger side and then we'll move on to our driver's side so just some other tips on how I did this basically first thing put that up there and then I tightened down basically all these not like super tight but I tightened them down so they're snug uh, we'll go through and torque everything correctly here at the end tighten down all three of the top hat bolts and then I use the combination of force here force here and uh, just manipulated it to get it in. One thing I did do is I actually disconnected this line from its bracket right here with a pair of pliers because this line was taking the most strain. And when I did that, it loosened it up a, a lot more so that I had a lot more play and I could romp on this a lot more without worrying about my wires. So there's another little tip for you. So now we kind of move on to just assembling everything back together and torquing everything down to spec. Let's begin with our passenger side and then we'll move on to our driver's side. All right, so to start off our top hat bolts up here are, you're just going to wrench them hand tight as basically whatever you think is a good level of tightness. There is no real spec for how tight these need to be, but you're shooting for at least 50 foot pounds of pressure. You can't really get a torque wrench in here. Our bottom bolt down here though, I'm going to be torquing to 100 foot pounds. So I'm gonna do that now. And then we're gonna be using a jack to compress up our control arm to get this ball joint to seat. And then also we want to lower our sway arm down so that we can assemble that properly here when we get to that as well. First off, go to torque those down, torque that down, and then seat our ball joint and then put our carter pin on here. So let's start down. So again here we use the jack to jack up our control arm and then we were then able to seat this castle nut back in. So basically Used a lot of force pushing down here and uh, manipulated this up to get this to seat on. So I'm now going to uh, torque this down to 40 foot pounds, very low on the torque, and then uh, put the original carter pin back on this nut. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall my tie rod. Again, on the other side, the tie rod's already in, but I'm gonna reinstall it on this side and I'm gonna put the original castle nut back on it and carter pin, torque it down to 65 foot pounds. So now that that is all done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, tighten down or I'm going to put back on our brake line brackets, all these brackets right here. I'm going to put those back on the ones we took off and uh, then I'm going to go over to the other side and make sure that's all buttoned up before I move on to the sway bar and we'll do that one last. So again, we're going to repeat the process that we did on the other side. We're going to hand tighten those down nice and snug. Then we're gonna tighten this bolt down here to 100 foot-pounds. Then we are going to use the jack to seat our um, ball joint here, up here. We're gonna seat that together. We're gonna put that castle nut on, torque it down to 40 foot-pounds, and then we will be good to go other than wrapping up the brake line. All right, so now the last step here is to put our sway bars back on on both sides. And uh, these nuts are going to be torqued down to 50 foot-pounds. I think it says 52, but 50, 50, 55 foot-pounds is what we need to torque these down to. So let's do it. Okay, now with the lift fully, fully installed and ready to go, 
Uh, we're actually going to take a second now. Um, I'm going to actually going to put the wheels back on, but I'm not going to take it off the jack stands just yet because what I want to do is do the diff drop, which if you guys remember is not the one that actually comes in this kit. It's actually a little bit larger. This is a one inch diff drop that we're gonna be dropping the differential versus the half inch that comes in this kit. Again, I, I wanted a little bit more drop so that those uh, those axles, those I think they're called CV axles, the angles are a lot better. They're a lot more straight and uniform. So we're gonna be installing the one inch diff drop next. Um, as you can tell, it's pretty simple. So uh, I'm gonna put the wheels on and then we will move on to the underbelly of the vehicle to do that. All right, so underneath of the Tacoma here, first thing we're gonna do, want to do is remove this skid plate right here. There are four four bolts. There are 12 millimeters. There's one here, one here, one here, and one over here. So we're gonna undo all four of those. And this actually kind of pivots on the front. There are hooks right here and right here that kind of hook this. So as you guys will notice when I do this, this thing will kind of just hold itself right here until I lift it up off those hooks. So that's a Nice little feature Toyota has so that when you do this, this thing just doesn't hit you in the face. Alright guys, with the skid plate removed, I can now kind of show you what we're going to be doing for the diff drop. So we have this right here is our bottom bolt, one of our bottom bolts for our diff, and this is the other one right here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be undoing these bolts right here and putting a spacer in between here and in between here. We don't have an issue over here when we drop this down. This won't this won't hit this at all. We, we have clearance here. I, you can tell by my finger just a little bit. But on this side, we do not have clearance. So remember when I said we would have to cut a bracket? This is the bracket we gotta cut. So first thing we gotta do is unbolt this bracket. There are four bolts. I believe these are 19 millimeters. I will correct myself if I am wrong, but I believe these are 19 millimeters. There are two here and then there are two up front. We need to unbolt this bracket and then we're gonna go and we're gonna cut with our cut saw from here down to right about here. Let's uh, let's unbolt it. After further evaluation, this is not a uh, 19 millimeter bolt. These are actually 17s. So we're gonna take these out. If I can hold the camera and do this at the same time. One. There we go. There is our bracket. All right. So first off, I'm sorry if there's a lot of wind noise, but. Right now, we're gonna be taking the cutoff saw and doing our cutting. So first off, safety glasses, earplugs, very important for this sort of stuff. Second, where you're gonna be cutting, it's it's kind of rough. You don't really have to be exact, but uh, where I'm cutting is about about four inches to four and a half inches back, and I'm cutting roughly about one inch deep. I kind of go off of this line right here and kind of make it square, but it's roughly about one inch. So that's what we're gonna be cutting out right now. And now I would grab that piece and show you uh, what I cut out exactly, but um, that's really hot right now. So what I'm going to do now is let that cool, and then we're going to be hitting it with some paint, and then we're going to reinstall it. So right there you can see what I actually cut out. So that is now cut. So now I'm going to be filing down this edge so it's nice and smooth, and then we're going to hit it with some paint. I'm using some Krylon undercoating surface protection. Alright, so now I'm going to let this dry and then we will uninstall it in the truck and continue with the uh, diff drop portion. Alright, so fast forward a couple hours and it is fully dry and now we can actually reinstall it back into position here with the original 17 millimeter hardware. So we're going to do it now. All right, so now it is now time to lower our dip. So we're gonna be removing these bolts right here. There is, this is a 22 millimeter on the outside here. And then on the very top here, you can't really see it. Up here, where I can't really get a good angle to show you, there's a 19 millimeter nut on the other side of that bolt. And then we're gonna be sliding our spacer, the little spacer portion, we're gonna slide it in right in between here. Our new hardware is a 19 millimeter on both sides. All right, so with that removed, now we're going to slide in our, um, up here, you can kind of see the gap. We're gonna slide in this spacer right here, up above. You may have to pull down a little bit on the diff to get it in. Once you get it in there, we're gonna slide our bolt up and through. We will have to transfer these plates to be able to use them again. So uh, I'm gonna do that now and get the bolts up through it and bolt it all down. Now, lastly, before I go ahead and put the skid plate on, I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down. They don't really give you a spec, but I'm gonna torque them down to 80 foot-pounds just for precaution. 
All right, so that wraps up literally the whole entire front end of this lift. Now we're gonna take it off the jack stands, flip it around, and we're gonna install the, the block in the back, which is a lot easier than any of this front end stuff. This front end stuff takes about two thirds of the whole entire install. The back side goes really, really smooth and really quick. So we're gonna drop it down, flip it around, and do the other side, and we'll be done. All right, so just to give you guys an overview of what we're gonna be doing here on the rear. First off, for the rear install, you either wanna have a jack or some floor jacks underneath of the back axle because we're gonna be basically disassembling this back axle portion right here and then we're gonna need to lower it down. So that's why we need to kind of keep it where it's at. So we're gonna start the disassemble of the back by removing the stock shock. So we have a 14 millimeter bolt up here that we need to take out. And then we have a 17 millimeter bolt down here, both on both sides, 17 millimeter to take out on the bottom. And we will remove the stock shock to start. I forgot to mention to keep this from spinning, because when you turn this, this will spin when you go to loosen it. You need to put a pair of vice grips on the top of this bolt. As you can kind of see right there, it's a squared off bolt. So you take a pair of vice grips, you clamp them down on top, and that way um, it'll stop it from rotating when you get around. You can put it up against, you can kind of put it up against the frame and then that way you can actually loosen this bolt. Once you take that bolt out, it easily just comes right out. And again, like I, I've been doing this whole entire time, I always put the hardware back onto whatever it is that I unscrewed it. Same thing with this, and I kept it in the same orientation, that way I know how it goes back on. Next thing we need to do is undo these U-bolts. Underneath here, there are four 19 millimeter bolts that we need to take off. So we're gonna take all four of those off, and then we're gonna be able to lower this side and put our spacer in right between the leaf and the axle. All right, so with those removed, you can see that the axle already dropped down a little bit. We need to, we're gonna get the spacer that's over there and uh, we're gonna kind of use our jack to lower this down just a little bit so we can fit in our spacer. So this right here is our spacer. As you can kind of see right here, there is a little bit of a taper to the actual block itself. Um, you want the smaller end of the taper towards the front of the truck and you want the nub on the bottom here and then on the top is where we're gonna have um, the hole and that's gonna line up with our nub that's in there and our hole that's on the bottom. So I'm now gonna use the jack to lower this down a little bit, slide this in, jack it back up, and then we're gonna use the new U-bolts that came with the kit to secure our block back on. All right, so as you saw there, I lowered the jack down enough that we could slide our spacer in, and then I repeated by jacking it back up and then kind of pushed a little bit to lock it into place. Again, small taper on this end, big end on this side. And now we're gonna be using our longer U-bolts that come with our lift kit, and including with the flat washers and nylon nuts. So we're gonna slide these over, and then we're going to use the previous bottom plate, and we're gonna put it all together. The new nuts on this are a 22 millimeter, and uh, we're gonna bolt it up. All right, so now we're gonna take our impact with the 22 millimeter and we're going to tighten these down. One thing to consider is when you actually tighten these down, you wanna go in an X pattern. So I'm gonna start on this corner, go to that one um, back there, and then I'm gonna to go to this one, and then I'm gonna to go to this one. So you gotta do it in a little bit of an X pattern. That way you get an even squeeze on it. And then we're gonna be torquing these down to 90 foot pounds afterwards. All right, so now it is time to install the strut. And just a couple things to point out again, uh, I have a shock boot on mine that does not come in the kit. I will link it in the description down below. They're fairly cheap to put on, and they definitely help with the longevity of your shock. Also, I have actually gone out and bought different bushings. These bushings are also linked in the description down below, but these are a lot stronger. It can handle a lot more of the abuse than the soft ones that come on the stock shock. So again, with the kit, these are not included. They expect you to reuse the ones from the factory uh, shock. So in my case, I went and bought some stronger ones to use. Um, and just to point out, there's a bottom cup here, and then you want the top of this right here with the little nipple here sticking out, and then 
vice versa this is going to go on the top portion with our other top plate facing down and the included washer all right so probably the easiest point in this whole entire install you just use the factory bolt put it back in the washer and the nut go on the back side right there we're going to torque this down right here to 80 to 90 foot pounds there isn't really a spec for this but i'm going to go 80 to 90 foot pounds just to be safe and then up here we just hand tighten this nut and we might also have to use our vice grips again to secure this while we are tightening down that nut because this center shaft will spin all right, and that right there is all for this side. It's completely done. Again, the rear is really simple uh, compared to the whole entire madness in the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the other side, quickly repeat everything I just did on this side, and we will have the lift completely installed. And just like that, we have the other side buttoned up. So all that's left to do now is to put the tires back on, lower down to the ground, uh, make sure we torque down all of our lug nuts one last time. You always wanna make sure you torque down your lug nuts to about 100 uh, foot pounds after you impact them back on. That's just a little pro tip there. But after that, that's the complete install of the lift kit. To give you guys kind of a breakdown of how long this would take you, obviously I'm filming everything so it takes me a little bit longer to do. But the whole entire frame Front end, the, the whole entire front end assembly takes forever. It took me five hours today to do. This rear end right here, after I put the wheels and tires on very quickly, is only gonna take me an hour and a half in total. So that just kind of gives you a breakdown. It's literally twice as long, if not longer, to do the front end than it is the back end. You will need a complete full day to be able to knock this all out. So I'm gonna throw the rims back on and I'll wrap this up. And that is it. Let me quickly pull the truck out and uh, it is kind of dark outside right now, but I can kind of show you guys the finished product. All right guys, well this is it for the lift video, the N3 Rough Country strut lift, uh, how you put it on, how you put it on your truck. One thing to keep in mind, when you do this, you need to go get an alignment because your front end now with the lift, it screws up all those angles. You gotta go get it aligned. So that is what I have scheduled for on Monday. Hopefully they will be open with the whole epidemic and everything that's going on, but I will be able to get it fully aligned and we will be ready to rock and roll. Now I'm not putting the rims and tires on it just yet. Uh, one, because that alignment's all screwed up and two, because I need to go uh, clean those rims and tires because they currently have a bunch of mud and stuff on them. I wanna go clean those up before I throw them on here. That's all for this video. If you guys liked it, be sure to give a big thumbs up that this was helpful. Be sure to share it somewhere. Let everyone know about it. Uh, leave down in the comment section down below if I missed anything or if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. I will answer, I will respond. But the 2020 Tacoma TRD off-road build is underway. We got the lift kit done. That was the biggest undertaking for this was getting the lift kit done. Um, in, the next, uh, in the next video, we'll be doing the alignment and getting our rims and tires put on there. So stay tuned. I will see you guys on the next one. Taco Rick out. Peace.